The Pentagon and SpaceX blocked Russians from using Starlink on the battlefield. Pentagon officials are working with Elon Musk's SpaceX to prevent the Russian military from using unauthorized Starlink internet terminals on the battlefield in Ukraine. Bloomberg writes about this with reference to John Plum, head of the Space Policy Department of the U.S. Department of Defense. It is noted that in this matter, the United States is actively cooperating with the government of Ukraine and SpaceX. At this point, we have been successful in countering Russian use of Starlink, but I am confident that Russia will continue to try to find ways to use Starlink and other commercial communications systems. This will continue to be a problem. I think we have dealt with it and found good solutions, as with Starlink and with Ukraine, he said in an interview with Bloomberg News. However, Plum declined to go into detail about what methods or procedures are being used to curb Russia's use of portable communications terminals that connect to SpaceX's fleet of low-orbit satellites. Representatives of the Ukrainian government also did not comment. The publication notes that Starlink terminals are still advertised for sale in Russia on platforms such as the Ozon e-commerce site. The sellers claim that they operate on a subscription basis issued in the name of residents of European countries where the technology is licensed. Mikhail Fedorov, Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation, said that by May 2022, Ukraine had received 10,000 Starlink terminals, which provide critical communications in the war against the Russian invaders. The Pentagon subsequently awarded SpaceX a $23 million one-year contract that ends this month. When asked about the status of the contract, Space Policy spokesman Omar Villarreal said they were working to extend it until November. As you know, from the first months of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Ukraine has been using Starlink terminals. They help both the military at the front and have been installed more than once in cities liberated from the occupiers so that people can contact their relatives. Recently, the head of the Ministry of Digital Development, Mikhail Fedorov, announced that Poland will continue to pay for the work of more than 20,000 Starlink terminals, which it transferred to Ukraine. French military already present in Donbass, French journalist Christelle Niant a military correspondent from France living and working in the Donetsk is convinced that the French military is already taking part in hostilities in Donbass on the Kiev government's side. I'm almost sure that there are French soldiers on Ukrainian battlefields because it would be impossible for the untrained Ukrainian military to operate Caesar self-propelled howitzers, she told TASS in an interview. She added that the Ukrainian Armed Forces is drafting people with no military experience as part of its mobilization campaign and sends them to the front line after just two or three weeks of training. Effectively, it is impossible to operate a self-propelled howitzer after a three-week training. This means that someone else with much greater experience is using them. Clearly, those should be people with military background and experience of using such weapons, in other words, French career officers or former soldiers. That is why I believe that French soldiers are already on the battlefield, Niant said. In her opinion, France has been sending its military to Ukraine in small groups to mitigate possible political risks for the current French leadership. At this point, sending a large group will be a major risk for French President Emmanuel Macron. If they perish all at once, he will have to take the consequences, she said, adding that it is a lot easier to find a plausible public explanation for occasional deaths. That is why I think that he will not send the military in thousands, the journalist added. Otherwise, how would the French government explain to thousands of families where their loved ones are? In an interview with the British magazine The Economist, French President Emmanuel Macron acknowledged it might be possible to consider sending troops to Ukraine in case of Kiev's request if Russian forces break through the front line. Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters that these speculations were an unprecedented new round of tension. If the French military appears in the conflict zone in Ukraine, it will inevitably become a target of the Russian army. The spokeswoman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Maria Zakharova, said this. If the French appear in the conflict zone in Ukraine, they will inevitably become targets of the Russian armed forces. It seems to me that Paris understands this well, she said. Мы военнослужащие российской армии, попавшие в плен в связи с тем, что наше командование отправило на хорошо укрепленные и защищенные минными полями позиции украинской армии без надлежащей экипировки и вооружения. 
тюрьмы в плену, многие наши товарищи погибли или были ранены. Мы знаем о том, что командование вооруженных сил Российской Федерации хочет дестабилизировать ситуацию на границах Харьковской области. Это неверное решение, потому что здесь была эшелонированная мощная оборона. Город защищают многие подразделения, в том числе Кракен и другие бригады, которые будут сражаться за свой город, за свою родину. Не ходите сюда, здесь вас ждет только смерть и боль. Я Крюков Сергей Александрович, 9 марта 1986 года рождения. Красноярский край, город Минсин. Я Ярлыков Павел Владимирович. Год рождения 13 октября 1977 год. Родился в городе Норильске. А я Фатеев Денис Сергеевич. 12.05.87 года рождения. Родился и проживаю в город Подольск. Я командир разведывательного взвода 139-го отдельного мотострелкового батальона штурмового. Старший лейтенант Акименко Александр Юрьевич. Родился 6 ноября 1986 года в городе Ростове-на-Дону. Я Некрасов Евгений Павлович, 23.12.1996 года рождения, уроженец города Астрахани. Я Клименко Виктор Геннадьевич, 3.08.87 года рождения, уроженец города Барнаула, Алтайского края.